Hello toy fans, this is Jim. Thanks again for taking the time to stop by my channel. Today's video is kind of an unusual one for me because usually I've been focusing on stuff I like, like uh, playing the piano or uh, model airplanes and most recently I've been putting together a lot of Star Wars videos. Uh, but today's focusing on Hot Wheels and like I said this is rather unusual for me because I don't collect Hot Wheels but my son does. And so I bought a set of non-functional superchargers and uh, lap counters that you see pictured here and I, I bought them for him for Christmas hoping that I could repair them and for those of you that follow my channel you know that I do a lot of repairs to non-working Star Wars toys the Kenner ones as well as do some modifications to them probably much to the chagrin of many collectors but uh, anyway nonetheless um, I haven't found a video that does a total disassembly reassembly of these things and so I thought well, maybe this might be useful for those of you out there that do collect Hot Wheels and you might find it helpful as well as maybe some replacement parts that kind of idea of what to do so without further ado let's go ahead and take a look at these now all of these are working so you'll see that this one's and eh, it doesn't spring back totally as well as it should but it will there we go but it will totally come back uh, to the uh, now this one works really quite nicely, so I don't think I'm going to take that one apart. Actually, this is the one that I modified the most. <laughs> Maybe that's why it works nicely. And this one does too. So I guess it's that one that's not quite up to snuff. And it could be just the placement of the that O-ring. Now this O-ring here is a uh, idea that I got off one of the Hot Wheels sites because this little tensioner on this plate happens to get loose and so that holds the tension of that plate onto the gears of the uh, counter. This plate was missing totally as was the arm and so I had to totally remanufacture that and so <clears throat> I'll show you how to take these things apart and uh, what it all entails. So since this one isn't working the best, we'll go ahead and uh, pry this out. Now, I'm gonna start with this edge here since it tends to be the one that pulls apart the easiest. And I may have to pull, pause the video to do this. You wanna basically push back on this piece here, pry that orange forward without stretching the plastic. If you can, there we go. Okay, and then that pops off, like so. There we are. Okay. Now you hear a little brass piece that moved. So, oftentimes, this arm, as I mentioned earlier, doesn't have the springiness. So you put a, an O-ring on there. Again, that's not my own idea. That's a video that I, or idea I took from a video online. But these fingers here, brass fingers, also cause a problem. Um, and so I'll show you how to take the whole thing apart and then straighten them out. And then all the pieces that are involved. Okay. All right. So here is the housing. You already saw the roof. You have the spring here. The spring has two little fingers that point out and a little and a notch inside. So what you're going to do is you're going to, if you need to clean that the rust off, you can with a wire wheel. Uh, so we're going to get that right in place. Now the next piece we have here is our TENS counter. And so <clears throat> this is going to go right over that disc. And you may want to do a little bit of lubrication with some plastic oil. This is Liberty Oil Products, meant specifically for plastic slot car gears. So I'm just going to dab a little bit on there, not too much. I'm also going to dab a little bit on that, which I hadn't done before. Just kind of work it in, and we'll roll that around. That should help that to be able to move freely. Now, the tab on that spring is important as far as the placement goes, okay? So we're gonna get that right there. I'm gonna put this here. Now this arm has a little springy piece that's supposed to hold this metal plate in position. It was missing on one of my, on, on this one here. You can see that it's made of brass. And, uh, in fact, it's 20 thousandths brass right here that I, I had extra stock. And uh, so what I did was I used this as a template and then cut it to shape using tin snips and then used a Dremel uh, 
cutting wheel to this thing here to, to cut it to shape. Okay, so this tab's really important on this arm. You want to make sure, there we go, okay, that it's going to go up against that arm of the spring, or that finger of the spring, okay? So it doesn't matter where the position of the ones are, so I'm going to back this all the way up and then rotate it through. Now, I didn't catch the spring in there. We're going to do that all the way through. Now I'm going to place this gear on there, and we'll put a little bit of oil here, a little bit of oil there, don't do too much. Work that in, and now we're going to press the whole thing together. Now this, you want to pry that out so that little, that steel piece um, fits nicely. The, these were both rusted, and I took them to the bench grinder where the wire wheel is, and just wire wheeled them. Okay, now this should spring, and you'll see that springs really nicely. Okay, that's what it was not doing earlier, so I think the oil helped just a bit. Now the next piece is pretty easy to do. You have these brass pieces that are going to form kind of a letter U. Uh, these were bent on both of mine, and so what I did was I took them over to the bench vise, which, which is right there, and then took a brass hammer because they're made out of brass, and just basically hammered that in. Now. Now, pardon me, I'm a little bit tight on space here in my garage, and so I got my Model T just parked right up against where the bench is. So you just flatten that out, and uh, then what you're going to do is you're going to insert those into these little slots right here, and those are going to provide some resistance on the back side of the tins and the one-place gears. Okay, so we'll set, reassemble those. And now... I get the right angle. I found it's best to put them both in at the simultaneously rather than try to do one at a time. And there we are. So you'll see where they butt up against the gears there. Okay. Now you have this piece here, this brass piece, and that's going to slip into those little teeth right there. And that rest there. Now you can do a test by keeping a finger there and holding it together. And it's not springing back like it should. There we go. Okay. So let's see how this whole thing pans out. Go ahead and put the top on. Now you want to put the front fingers on first. Make sure that this doesn't get jammed. Insert it inside, like so. Okay. Put those in, and then the back teeth. Okay. Pops into place. Now we're going to zero this thing out. Let's see how it does. Has a little bit of springy issues. Okay, I think the oil's just working in. And the tins place is not working. Okay. So it could be that it's not catching on the inside there. Or maybe it just got locked into place. Let's see how it goes here. It wants to move, but there's something. There we go. And it could be that it just needs to get the oil worked in. There we go. Yep, that's all it was. Okay. So, anyway, there you go. There's the total disassembly and reassembly of this 1969 Hot Wheels lap counter. Well, I hope you found it useful. Take care, and we'll see you at a future video.